And now we have the second speaker against the motion, who's distinguished classicist, professor at Cambridge, and author of many books on the ancient world, and more recently also of a blog, A Don's Life, selections from which have also been published in book form. She is Mary Beard. Oh, goodness me. Um, we've had an awful lot of brilliantly trained, blokish public school rhetoric on display so far tonight. I'm very surprised that Barnaby didn't remind you how brilliantly Harrow had trained Francis in being able to address an audience of thousands. Um, we're going to change gear now. Because I feel very peculiar to be speaking against this motion. Charming, I have to say, as my fellow speakers are on this side of the house. I don't actually feel they're my natural political allies, which is why I'm dressed in red. Um, in fact, if my mum, who was the head of a maintained primary school in Telford, was alive, to see me sharing a platform in this subject with the head of Harrow, nice as he is, I'm afraid she'd turn in her grave. So let me put my slightly odd cards on the table. Uh, I agree with that lot. I think that public schools provide a context for the entrenchment of social privilege, for sheer snobbery, uh, for flogging and for fagging, if they still do it. Um, and I actually don't like the mums of the public school boys <laughs> any more than they do. I think that um, public schools in all sorts of ways act to bolster some of the values that are completely the worst in modern Britain and in another life and in another world and in another fantasy, I'd be there like in that last scene in Lindsay Anderson's If, I'd be there with my Kalashnikov and I'd be stringing them up on the lampposts. Sorry guys, nicely, but I would. So I don't like public schools. I also don't think that fee-paying schools are necessarily in any way better than state schools. There are some truly wonderfully educationally enriching great public schools, and they're the ones that I've got in mind and we all talk about. At the other end of this spectrum, there are some truly ghastly fee-paying schools that charge ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of cash for an appalling education, not much better than the dame schools of the 19th century, and girls who float out of posh schools with half a GCSE may be socially privileged, but they're intellectually one of the worst disadvantaged products of the Western world. I can't help thinking that if Lady Di had been encouraged to get a few more GCSEs, she would have done better in life. So given that, why am I sitting on this side, not the other side? Quite simply, I think it depends on what you believe society is and what range of, you, what range of things and qualities you think society needs to make it the kind of society you want to be proud of and want to be part of. And that means intellectual goods as well as economic and social ones. And it means, in part, a society in which we can still communicate with those outside our own shores in languages other than our own. And in a society, it means having a society and being part of a society in which we still have direct access to the thousands of years of history and world culture that frame and enrich our experience as human beings. That sounds a bit naff, but I think it's true. And for the moment, while we have a philistine and underfunded state education system that reneges on its duty to equip our kids with the tools of access to anything called culture, I've got no option but to join forces with these guys and to encourage you to do so too, even if it's only on a temporary basis, and in due course we will be nicely stringing them up from the lampposts. 
Now, you might be expecting me to drone on about the decline of Latin and Greek in state schools, and indeed I could do. Um, I will remind you that there are fewer than 500 comprehensive schools in this country that offer any classical languages at all, and most of those are offered in what is euphemistically known as twilight classes, which means you do it when you're half asleep. It's also the case that the government are in putting a cap on teacher numbers, has decided to cap the training of classics teachers so that there are not enough teachers being trained even to replace those who retired. But I'm not going to rest my case on that, even though I happen to think that a society in which nobody has access in the original language to Homer, Virgil, Euripides or Ovid is a grossly impoverished society. I'm much more concerned tonight with modern languages that is, with the tools we have for communicating with the rest of the world and our entry into the shared culture of humanity. It seems to me that a penny-pinching and blinkered state educational system is busy actively destroying the linguistic competence of this country, as Barnaby says. In 60% of state schools, fewer than half the pupils are studying any foreign language at all at age 14, compared with 18% of private schools, which includes all those silly dame schools I was talking about. The entries for French GCSE fell by over 100,000 between 2004 and 2008, while German is now making Latin look strong. These losses are overwhelmingly in state schools. So bad is it that one of the biggest problems, apart from actually earning any medals, one of the biggest problems facing the 2012 Olympics is finding enough Brits who can actually translate for the Olympic Games. And this isn't a blip, and the decline could be terminal. Once you lose these cultural resources, you don't ever get them back. You can't decide that you'll let Homer skip a generation or two and then learn how to read him again when we've got a bit more money around. You have to keep it going. Our skills in these areas depend on a continuous tradition of learning, which is now being sustained for all their other faults, and they're manifold faults, so we don't need to go through them again. The other side's doing that, fine. But these cultural traditions are being sustained by the public schools. Against the monolithic philistinism, the exam-obsessed curricula imposed by Whitehall, not to mention the still lousy pay given to young teachers, the public schools continue, for better or worse, and it is for better, to offer a glimpse of an alternative, which is why that I've had to put my lot in, despite my heart with these guys. To finish, I suppose you might say, but that just gives the middle class an opt-out. We need the middle class in the state sector to ensure that the state sector does offer what we want it to offer. And I say that's a nice dream, but I say dream on. Think back a few years. If the massed ranks of all classes in our society can't stop us going to war with Iraq, I very much doubt that they've got much effect on potential enrolments for GCSE German. So I think we've got to back these guys, uncomfortable though it is, just for the time being. Thank you.